With 2024 finally being in full effect and the new season being here, you need to know the top five operators to play for the new season and the new year. Without wasting any more of your time, my number five spot is going to be Gridlock. Now, Gridlock is a versatility machine. If you take a look at her loadout right here, first of all, she has two very viable primary weapons. You have the F90, which has a 1.5 time scope on a very good AR with good fire rate, good ammo capacity, and the damage being pretty high for how high the other stats are as well. In terms of her primary options, this one is personally my favorite, but if you want to run the M249 saw, it's still viable because as you can see, it does even more damage with even more bullets. The only issue is its fire rate, but even the recoil down in the bottom right isn't that bad. It has a 1.5 time scope on it with a 2x scope, so if you want scope versatility, this is even better than the first option. Now, if you move on to the secondary weapons right here, you have the clear choice of running the Super Shorty. Having a shotgun in general, especially on attack, is very powerful because it allows you to make vert, rotates, or any sort of soft destruction that you might need to make an even more further reinforced strategic attack. But her secondary gadgets is where she really, really shines. She has EMP grenades if you need to help get open the walls. She has frag grenades, although recently nerfed are still very powerful because you can get bulletproof utility and she has smoke grenades which are good for plant executes which with gridlock's ability is really what she's meant for so all three of these options are viable which you don't see in a lot of attacking operators gridlock though is one of the most misunderstood operators on the attack and arguably in the entire game most people like to use her for flank watch but that isn't actually her primary job Sure, you can put flank watch with her track stingers on one or two staircases, but you as a gridlock player should be saving your tracks for the site to pair it up with your smokes or your frag grenades to get the bomb down to make it so much harder for them to rotate in the site to deny your plant. That really is what gridlock is meant to do. And with her versatile loadout and how easy she is to play with her easy to use gun, it's very, very easy to get the job done. So gridlock is one of my favorite operators to date right now, even though she's a three armor because of how easy and versatile she can be for any scope of attackers in the game. Someone who's a bit more technically challenging though is Osa. Now Osa's still a pretty simple operator to play, but the issue is that a lot of people play her wrong. Most people will put their deployable shield in their face and walk around with it like they're a shield operator like Blitzer Monty. Instead, what you want to be doing is putting down your shield in front of you and acting like she is a deployable shield. Operator tips aside though, going into her loadout, you can begin to see why she's in this list. She has Thermite's 556, which is one of the best ARs in the entire game. It's literally Sledge's AR, but with slightly better stats. And you know how easy to use that gun is, so you can begin to see how powerful this gun is. Not only that, but if you've played Jackal, you know that the PDW9 is an even better weapon. With more ammo and more forgiving recoil with the 1.5 times scope, this gun slams. Arguably, both of the guns slam. So if you want something more SMG-like, you can run the PDW. If you want an AR, you can run the 556. Either way, they're both great weapons. Not only that, but she has the best pistol in the entire game, the PMM. It does 61 damage. Although it only has 8 bullets, it's not like you go to a secondary weapon because of its ammo count anyways. You go there because you're already out of ammo, so this PMM weapon is very, very nice. But just like Gridlock, Osa has an assortment of secondary gadgets that can be useful. EMPs for getting the wall open, which is primarily what you'll use because as Osa, you play behind the breach anyways. Frag grenades for utility, in case they have a Thatcher or somebody else brings EMPs. Frag grenades are really good. Even after the nerf, they still do their job in a less broken way. The only thing that doesn't really make sense is claymores, but even then, sometimes I'll be rappelling on a window with Osa and I don't want to get ran out on, so sometimes I'll run claymores too. Like I said with Gridlock, all three of these secondary gadgets can be completely useful if played correctly, which is why Osa is in the top four. Not only is Osa in the top four just because of these secondary gadgets and the loadout that they have, but also Osa is just a great operator in general. The fact that you can take an angle that is predominantly defended by defenders and turn it into an attacking power position is one of the most overpowered abilities in the entire game just because of how it works. Typically, if you open a wall, defenders easily can just use their scopes to look at the wall and make sure you don't walk in, which is why breaching is so hard to do and so time consuming. With Osa's shields, however, you can easily take control of these power positions and turn it into the favor of attackers, which no other operator has been able to do except for maybe the exception of Monty but since nobody plays him Osa is just the best bet that you're going to get in the entirety of the attacking round. The only issue with Osa is that she takes a bit of team coordination to get to her fullest potential. Someone who doesn't have that problem though is Buck. Buck is amazing because the versatility that comes with his play style is very good especially for how simple of a gadget Buck has. Buck is not only able to get vert from above but he's also able to get vert from below which is something that can't be said for the other vert operators like Sledge and Ram, at least reliably. 
Not only does Buck have the ability to do this, but the ability to make rotates on the fly is really, really easy to do with Buck because of how quick it is to get your shotgun out and then get your gun back out after you use your shotgun. Whereas it's not as easy with Ram and Sledge because they're both three armors. Buck is also good with the two armor ability if you want to be playing him more as an entry frag and less like a support operator that just gets vert, which is why he's so good play style wise with his versatility because anybody in the entire game can play Buck in any any sort of play style. If you're a support main, you can play Buck. If you're a flex main, you can play Buck. If you're a fragger, you can use Buck to frag by making yourself rotate and rushing into the site. Either way, Buck is amazing. Not only is the play style of Buck amazing, but the loadout also backs the versatile play style. You can either be very aggressive and run the AR swinging pretty much everything that you see with a 1.5 time scope, or you can be more passive using the 2x scope on his DMR to hold angles and get kills that way. You're also able to use the Gon 6 to get utility, or you can use the Mark 1 9mm with your AR. AR to make it even easier for you to get kills in case you just run out of ammo in your primary gun. Buck also has flashes or hard reaching charges, so if you want to be a support, maybe get the hatches open, you can bring hard reaching charges, or if you want to be a fragger and run him with your gun, you can use flash grenades to help you do that. So as you can see, not only is Buck's playstyle very versatile, but also the loadout is versatile and it helps him be more versatile. So Buck is just versatile! <laughs> and that is one of the many reasons why I think Buck definitely deserves a spot in the top 5. Someone else who definitely deserves a spot in the top 5 is Dokabi. Now, Dokabi is one of the best operators on attack right now because of the fact that she is so easy to get so much value out of. Not even talking about her loadout, let's just go over Dokabi's primary ability, the Logic Bomb. When you activate this ability, every single defender that is alive will have their phone ring. This allows you to hear defenders up to a mile away, so if anybody doesn't want to drone a certain side of the map, all they have to do is activate the logic bomb, and if you don't hear any phones, then you know that an entire side of the map is clear. It makes it to where you don't have to drone, which gives you a lot of time, which is very, very, very valuable for you as an attacker. Not only this, but if you're able to roam clear, which is what the logic bomb is primarily used for, then you successfully can get access to every single defender camera in the entire game. It doesn't matter if it's an ability camera like Maestro, Echo, or Valkyrie, you still get access to it. Not only does this give you information on defenders, because typically a lot of these cameras are next to sight, but also they have to shoot the camera if they don't want to be spotted by it. So it's information gathering and information denial in the exact same ability. If getting kills to get that information is hard for you, well, well, then her loadout is really good. If you're on PC, the Mark 14 EBR is an outstanding, arguably one of the best DMRs in the entire game. With little to no recoil right here, as you can see, the Mark 14 is even better. Fire rate's easy to use, it has an assortment of scopes because it's a DMR, and there's really zero recoil, which as you can see is why I'm running the angled grip on it. It has that little recoil. Also, the versatility that she gets with her secondary SMGs is great. The C75 Auto is a low recoil, high rate of fire option for most people that can't control recoil. If you can control a bit of recoil, though, the SMG-12 is the much better option than the C75. Or if you need utility gone, you can just bring the Gon 6 anyways. So the versatility is just off the charts, and we haven't even gone over her secondary gadgets either. She has EMPs if you want to help get the wall open, she has smokes if you want to help get the plant down, or she has flashes if you want to secure those roam clear kills to get your ability active on the board. Overall, if you just play Dokabi and you call a few times and maybe get cameras once every few rounds, you will be a force to be reckoned with on the attack, and that's why, just because her existing gets you so much value, that she is number two on this list. Now before we go over the best attacker for solo queue ranked, we need to go over two honorable mentions, operators that you might wanted to see on this list but didn't quite make the cut. The first of which is going to be Ram. Now the only reason Ram isn't in the top 5 is because you really only play Ram whenever you're playing a bottom floor site. You never use Ram for top floor, and honestly you hardly use her for mid floor either. Ram is arguably the best soft destruction operator when it comes to playing Vert, but you can only use her so often that you can't reliably play her every single round in solo queue and her be useful. For the top 5, I wanted to make sure that I put operators that you could play every single round, that you would get value out of every single round, which is why specifically Ram wasn't in the top five, but she still definitely deserves an honorable mention spot. Another honorable mention is Sledge. Now, Sledge is still a good operator, arguably the easiest operator to learn if you're a new player, which is why he's really good for solo queue environments in general. But the majority of the player base is gold, which unfortunately takes a little bit of skill to get to even for some of the more seasoned players. So the ability to have a really easy operator isn't something that should be considered when making a top five solo queue list. Not only this, but Sledge is a free armor without the SMG 11. So he's just not the menace that he once was. If you pick Sledge every round, sure, 
you're not going to be bad you'll get some value but it's nowhere compared to somebody like dokibi where you're guaranteed to get a lot of value every single time you play him if you're thinking of not using your brain and just kind of running in and using a 1.5 time scope sledge is a great alternative to operators like yana and ash who are a bit more fast paced than some players like but again, compared to some of the other operators on this list and the number one operator on this list, Sledge doesn't even compete. Speaking of my number one operator on this list, the best solo queue attacker that you can use every single round to guarantee that you get wins is Ace. Ace obviously is the number one because not only is ace good for getting frags with the ak and 1.5 time scope combo but he's also the quickest and best hard breacher out right now now they have been talking about making a test server so that they can try maybe a slower explosion time for his charges because he's that good they're thinking of nerfing him not only is the breach fast big and good in general but also take a look at the loadout we talked about how the ak-12 is one of the best guns in the game but honestly it is the best gun in the game out of all the guns it is the best in, in terms of versatility, it has it covered. You can have a close range, medium range, or long range distance gunfight with this gun. It has good fire rate, so it doesn't matter if you're going against somebody with a better rate of fire weapon than you, you can hold angles or you can swing things with this gun, giving you a lot more playstyle versatility. Not only is it the best gun in the game, but it also has the best scope in the game, the 1.5 time scope. The 1.5 time scope is one of the best scopes in the entire game because it allows you to have long range and close range gunfights without any drawbacks seemingly at all. Not only this, but if you take a look at the recoil chart, there's barely any recoil other than the first two bullets. So as long as you can control that, which by the way, is pretty easy to do, then you won't have any trouble using the AK-12. The P9 is a pretty good all around pistol, nothing too crazy, but he also brings claymores. So if you're trying to sit outside of a wall and maybe get some kills or just get the wall open in general, claymores really help Ace do that so that he doesn't get run out on in the process of breaching a wall. But just playing a hard breacher that you can get kills with for solo queue is so good because it means that you're able to help your team and get the round win while also still being able to get kills in the meantime. So fraggers love Ace because they can help their team and still frag out however much they want to as long as they get the wall open first, which is why Ace not only is the best attack right now but he's one of the better operators in the entire game because of how easy he is to get so much value out of with that out of the way that is it for this video check out this next video my name's alka and i hope i see you there later